Allah says in the Quran, and this is a very important point. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِن شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ They neither killed Jesus nor did they crucify him. But rather, it was made to appear to them so. It looked that Jesus had been crucified, but he wasn't crucified. This is in the Quran. وَلَكِن شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍّ مِّنْ all of the Christians who are differing amongst themselves, they are in doubt, they don't have certainty. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا Of a yaqeen, they did not kill him. Allah is saying, you don't know, I know. بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah raised Isa up to himself. So the Qur'an unequivocally states, Jesus was not killed. Jesus was not crucified. Rather, an image was made that they assumed Jesus was crucified. And so Jesus is raised up. And right from the beginning, controversy begins amongst his own followers. Who was that? Was it really Jesus? Was he in flesh and blood? Did he come back from the dead? Or was he never Allah dead in the first place? What happened? And from the beginning, Christianity split up into such a wide spectrum that us Muslims, we have never had this problem in our religion. From the beginning, Christianity began to differ. Who is Jesus? What is his relationship with God? What is the role of the law? And you had an entire spectrum of opinion. But what happened, very briefly, two primary figures that every Muslim should be aware of. This is basic history that even academics who are uh, fair to the tradition acknowledge this. Where did modern Christianity come from? Two primary individuals. Number one, Paul. Paul was an early convert to Christianity who never met Jesus. He says he met him in a dream, but he never actually met Jesus before and when Jesus was walking on this earth. And Paul began to preach a very different version of Christianity. Paul began to preach that Jesus was not just the Messiah, he was the Son of God. Paul also began to preach that Jesus, you don't have to follow the law to believe in Jesus. Belief in Jesus substitutes the law. If you believe in Jesus, you don't have to pray or follow kosher or, or eat according to the Jewish tradition or anything, all of it is gone. If you believe in Jesus, you are saved. And Paul also began to preach that Jesus' message is for all of humanity, not just the children of Israel. These were the three main things that Paul introduced that Jesus never said. Jesus only preached he's the Messiah. Jesus said, follow the law. And Jesus said, I am for the children of Israel, not for all of mankind. Paul changed all of that. And the second figure is the figure of Constantine, the Roman emperor who died 337 CE, i.e. around 250 years before our Prophet ﷺ. So for 300 years, Christianity was a minority tradition in the Roman pagan empire. Christians were persecuted. Christians were killed by the Roman pagans until an accident, a fluke, Allah's qadr. The Roman emperor at the time by the name of Constantine, decided to convert to this obscure religion that less than 3% of his followers of his kingdom followed. Small religion, like Islam in America, small religion, similar to that. The Roman emperor, for reasons that are still discussed to this day, not the, the, the topic of our khutbah, decided to convert to Christianity. But which version did he convert to? He decided to convert to a version that was still somewhat similar to his previous pagan beliefs. And he adopted a version of Christianity that taught a trinity belief, three gods. Even though there were Christian sects that did not believe in three gods. He adopted a version of Christianity that had a father figure and a son figure and a redeeming figure. And there are many parallels in paganism to this. And even the image of Jesus with a halo on top. And this is very similar to early Christ, uh, pre-Christian paganism. And there are many, many research papers and, 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 and dissertations done about the parallels between Constantine Christianity and between paganism before Constantine. A lot of parallels. So Constantine adopts a version of Christianity that was similar to his own beliefs. And then he makes it the official version. So much so, anybody who disagrees with that version shall be persecuted and exiled. So he banned any other Christianity other than his Christianity. 
and that became the Council of Nicaea and the Nicene Creed and one thing led to another until it became the dominant and then it became the only version of Christianity in the entire uh, world. We have bits and pieces of other Christians remaining until the time of Salman al-Farsi, until the time of other people like the emperor of Najashi, Negus. He appeared to follow versions of Christianity that were non-Constantine, but eventually all other versions of Christianity were wiped out and only our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came preaching the true Christianity and that is Jesus is the Messiah. He is not the Son of God and Jesus came to fulfill the law. And brothers and sisters, of course, we disagree with Christians theologically, yet the Quran also praises the sincerity of Christians. The Quran says that Christians by and large are sincere people, but they're misguided. Allah says in the Quran that, uh, You will find the closest in love, in support to the believers are those who say we are Christians. Why? That is because they have righteousness and they have piety and they are not arrogant. And we find that true Christians, people even in this day who follow corrupted Christianity, you generally find them to be humble. You find them to be loving people. You find them to be not arrogant. This is what the Quran says. So our stance, brothers and sisters, is that we believe we are the real followers of Jesus Christ. We believe we are following the teachings of Jesus. And we say to our fellow Christians that we want you to research what Jesus himself said. We want you to study the true teachings of Jesus. And if you do so, then you will also conclude that Jesus never taught the Trinity. Jesus never taught that He is divine. Jesus never taught that you should disobey the law. He was a Jew and He practiced the Mosaic law and He was circumcised and He observed kosher and He never told you to disobey the law of Moses. And this is our perspective of Jesus. And we say now that we're about to be approaching the festival of Christianity that indeed we all have our festivals, we understand Christians have their festivals as well, but we should realize that we as Muslims, we have our festivals. Each Sharia, each religion has its own way and its own holy days as well. Christianity has its holy day. And by the way, I have to say 25th of December is not something Jesus said. This goes back to the winter solstice celebration of Roman pagans. 25th of December is not originating from Jesus Christ. It's originating from Constantine. It goes back to Roman paganism. The whole mythology of having a, a, a tree, this tree that they celebrate the Christmas tree, Middle Eastern, uh, Jesus, by the way, was a Palestinian Jew, uh, a Jew. He was a Palestinian Jew. Jesus was a refugee. He was an immigrant. He was a Palestinian. He was a Middle Easterner and he was a Jew, right? This is Jesus Christ. The whole mythology of uh, the, the, the nativity scene of this particular tree of hanging things on it. This is not what the Middle Eastern Palestinians used to do. This is all coming from paganism and also from European Celtic traditions, Nordic traditions, nothing to do with the actual teachings of Jesus. Nonetheless, we say to our fellow Christians, Lakum deenukum waliyadeen, you have your way, we have our way. And O oh Muslims, it is not of our methodology to celebrate other festivals. Like others do not celebrate Eid, we don't expect Christians to celebrate Eid, we as well do not celebrate other festivals. And also we have to be careful about, uh, uh, if you like, devaluing the, the value of our monotheism in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody wishes us uh, a Merry Christmas or whatnot, we can give a generic greeting back that may God bless you, right? Happy, uh, uh, happy season or festival. We should try our best to avoid words like Christmas because we don't want to give the ambiguity that we are supporting their belief in Jesus being the Son of God because we do not believe Jesus to be the Son of God. As well, we as Muslims should not import these festivals into our faith tradition. There is no reason for us as Muslims to have uh, Christian trees or Christmas trees or have these decorations in our houses. Yes, if you're a convert, and your whole community and, and family is still Christian and you have to visit them to fulfill the ties of kinship and you are the Muslim in your family. That's a different story. So you go to your family and you portray yourself, what is Islam? And you are the dignified Muslim, but you should not participate in any rituals that they pray to Jesus in because you are a Muslim, you don't pray to Jesus Christ. So if you're a convert, 
or a revert, and you go to your family on Christmas, that's something else, and we will give concession for this. But those of us who have Muslim families, we should not be importing religious festivals and, and pageantry that has nothing to do with our faith tradition into our faith tradition. And to conclude the first khutbah, one of the most interesting things that always shocks uh, Christians when we say it to them, is that we say to Christians, we Muslims believe Jesus is still alive. And Christians are shocked, what? Say, yes, Jesus never died. From our perspective, he is still alive. We believe this. He did not die yet, and he was not crucified. We firmly believe as Muslims, and this is main, there is no difference of opinion in Islam, that Jesus is a prophet that Allah raised up, and he shall come back towards the end of times. And he shall preach the true Tawheed. And those Christians that are sincere will recognize when Jesus comes back that Jesus never preached the Trinity. We believe Jesus will come towards the end of times and the Mahdi will be alive at the time and there will be the great Armageddon or the battle. All of this we share with Christians. The one difference is we Muslims believe we will be fighting on the side of Jesus. We will be Jesus' supporters. We will be the true followers of Jesus. And Jesus Christ shall be our Imam and our leader. This is how much we respect Isa ibn Maryam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to understand these wisdoms and benefit from them. Barakallahu alaykum furqan al-azim.